good evening everyone and welcome to the second session of our master class right so to, last time we had seen two of the dimensions of the technologies and if i were to just revert to my uh, screen right uh, right and if you if you remember we had seen uh, the first two of the 12 dimensions leadership stakeholders growth hunger and we had seen business prospects and opportunity heat map so in today's class we are going to complete right up to number 6 which is business readiness and growth curve peer set analysis and evaluation past performance analysis senior forecasting and progress tracking monitoring validation and reassessment okay so while you will feel that you know i am going so fast with all these the important thing is that what we will be doing is we will be learning through the process of reiteration that is when we follow multiple examples with more of the same thing and having an additive in terms of content it will lead to a better understanding of the uh, subject matter at hand remember equity research and investing fundamental investing is all about driving your mindset into a particular direction you know we are all used to taking decisions based haphazardly you know you might uh, plan a lot of things in life but when it comes to investing we do not plan so much you know typically what happens koi tip deta hai to apne le lete hai stock you know you don't think when investing that much money but here i want to make this a joyous and an exciting journey for you and so we are learning these things more through the experiential knowledge and so you will notice that the while the content is very rich there is minimal uh, written content available i will be sharing with you last lectures and this lectures uh, notes also with you uh, which you can use in in relation with the video so what you should ideally be doing is once you have analyzed and studied with me online and you understood most of the concepts is to go back home you know spend another one one and a half hours going over the content and uh, uh, evaluating everything mind you over the next 9 uh, weeks that is 18 classes we will be taking up at least 36 stock examples uh, across various industries so it will be a very very exhaustive a uh, learning process for us there is no substitute to um uh, learning by uh, how should i say learning by uh, examples right so let's get on and uh, let's revise the first two uh dimensions of analysis that is leadership and business prospects but before that to all the newcomers and to our guests i'd like to tell you about the course it is conducted online and it is started on july 19th uh, we are in the second class 2 hours per week thursdays and saturdays thurs saturday evening 7:30 and uh, uh, saturdays it's around 2:30 today only we started late because i had a prior commitment so classes 1 through 4 is we will run you through the introduction to all the 12 dimensions of of the investment toolbox classes 5 to 12 will be detailed analysis of eight stocks in eight different sectors with concords with management if possible and class 13 to 18 would be various aspects of portfolio building uh, developing screeners data mining and management how to manage your data uh, learning about investor psychology and then a last open class where we address different concerns of various uh, students so the fees are 15000 plus 18% tax which is non refundable and video recordings are available for offline viewing we will be giving you pdf notes and if you want more info you can always uh, network with me on whatsapp the number is given there 7021216247 or you can mail me on school or market studies.com so having uh, filled you in let's go get on to the dimension 3 sorry let's get on to understanding uh, revision of dimension 1 and 2 
and today we are going to look at one company which uh, recently had uh, covered with ventura we had come out with the report starlight technologies so you know what happens is a latest company which we have taken up and we will see how it uh, shapes up right so in the last class we had spoken about good management bad management and good businesses and bad businesses so if you notice that we had said that stocks which were extremely in the green box which is a good management and good business quality does not really have a re-rating concept except for earnings growth because uh, it always has rich valuations because of the confidence in the management right then we had said we avoid the stocks in the red box which are bad businesses and bad uh, managements so vakrangi pcs uh, manpasan and the works fall into that category now we are getting into uh, this stock which is sterlight industries which has a slightly devious uh, bent of mind of the promoter but he is an excellent executor so while on one hand while on one hand uh, we uh, the promoter has been played rookie with uh, small investors historically okay so that's a slight sanus but he has created tremendous shareholder value and uh, the business is uh, at the fulcrum of the most exciting journey of mankind as we get into the interconnected worlds of 4g 5g and iot to be with you in a moment just uh, bear with me i need to connect my uh, uh, cable for uh, charging okay we are done with right so sterlight essentially falls into this block of a a a slightly poor quality promoter but having a very good business uh, uh, quality right so here we can get chances of re-rating and hence uh, we are into this stock so as we said we the first evaluation of the promoter now see how the uh, key personnel management personnel are uh, there so for us the most important people in this business are uh, dr anand agrawal and uh, ks rao okay now dr anand agrawal who is the ceo and whole time director he has been with the company since 1995 okay he has been through man manufacturing quality and business development so he's got he knows each and everything about this business and prior to that he's worked with uh, siemens he's also director on avanstrat inc an lcd substrate glass manufacturing company in japan okay so not only does he have a business experience but he is also been with the company for on close to more than two decades and i guess he knows everything in and out of the business further he comes from siemens so his pedigree is good he is also working on the glass manufacturing side and uh, sterlite does manufacture glass to make the glass fiber okay and his precedents are fantastic he is a btech from iit kanpur and an ms and a phd so you have a good guy running your business they don't come any better business uh, experience uh, technological uh, uh, how how you got technological know how he is familiar with what the business does and uh, he's got excellent credentials and what's more he's been through the ropes of the business so he's a well deserving candidate who is running an exciting business uh while we would not be uh, lowering the value of anupam jindal who is a cfo okay and he too has been in the company since a very long time since 1998 but what i would like to uh drive your this thing is that the ceo and the chief operating officer because this is a very uh, operation intensive business and he too has been in the company since 93 okay at its optic fiber cable plant so while anand agarwal brings glass manufacturing expertise this guy has been with the optic fiber cabling business 
and so you have three excellent people leading the company so just see uh, ks rao's uh, credentials he has helped to set up the company's optic fiber cable plant in aurangabad and he has been instrumental in growing its fiber cables and services business in india china and brazil okay so he too is also a go to guy very valuable people and as we said the other day it is people who make the business and not the other way around so before valuing a business or evaluating a business you should know who's at the helm of the affairs and what we have here which is a rarity to have so many uh, such you know between the three of them they've been there for each one has been there for minimum 20 years so they bring 60 years of experience to the management of starlight you know this is anil agarwal could not have been more blessed than this if he had a signal business to to his area so now let's look at how so we have seen business prospects we have seen promoters and let's evaluate his uh, growth hunger because if a promoter is not growth hungry you know then maza nahi aata you know we are here for value creation and we want the hockey stick effect right so let's see promoter has demonstrated adequate hunger with his other ventures so you talk of uh, you talk of balco you talk of hindustan zinc you talk of kane energy uh, you talk of vedanta he has done phenomenally well today vedanta is a commodities conglomerate conglomerate you know the promoter stays in london very close to the hub of metal activity so his residence which is he used to earlier stay in india but he's moved abroad okay because he is close to the hub of metal activity so he really knows that you know all the business is done not in india it's done in london and he is there so he is strategically positioned himself okay finally the company is present in over 100 geographies only a man with vision and foresight can run a business successfully in over 100 regions isn't it and he has divested the power business so earlier they had a power business as well as uh, fiber and now they have divested the fiber business to vedanta and this is purely a telecom enterprise okay and also share holding pattern has remained constant at 55% for very long so what does it say that the management does not need capital to run its business however fast it is growing right and that is adding tremendous roe and they own more than 50% of the business so there is enough skin in the game for uh for an investor be to be satisfied that the company that he is dealing with is none other than a well managed company with enough vision enough experience enough managerial excellence and fantastic growth prospects so you know this company definitely deserves a high rating notwithstanding the fact that the promoter has been uh, unfair to uh, minority shareholders in the past but maybe he would have changed over that so we do not get uh, all tens out here but a big nine is definitely there right so now let's look at the second dimension which is business prospects and opportunity heat map okay so out here what i'm going to do is after i finish the slides i'm going to move to the latest presentation of starlight when they declare their second first quarter results and we'll take it from there because i think they have done a very excellent job to you know portray the what are the business prospects and what is the opportunity heat map that lies in front of you okay but before this let me give you a brief uh, idea of what we are dealing with so you know as we go into the future you know there are new technologies which are coming in so what you have seen in terms of payment solutions uh, uh, social mobile uh, social uh, platforms or maybe the marketing platforms like uh, uh, amazon and the others and maybe the paytms of the world you know now we are going to get into the really serious technologies which are going to change life 
completely away from us and at an unbelievable rate and not only at an unbe unbelievable rate but new models are going to evolve from this and sky is the limit you know to human creativity and uh, business uh, uh, business logic and business understanding and carving out niche businesses out of that okay so optic fiber is going to be central to all these new explosive technologies see you know 4g 3g worked on microwaves but if you really want fast connectivity you need fiber and optic fiber is the best source used to connect uh, anything okay apart from this uh, what we have is that uh, optic fiber the fiber which is made is not easy to make and today starlight is one of the lowest cost and among the top global players of fiber and currently there is a slight shortage and the fact that the telecom company verizon in the us is scouting for acquisition of fiber assets clearly tells you the story that fiber is very very big it's like connecting so you know let me put it in two ways uh, just think that there was a bullock cart road between bombay and pune in probability you would take nothing less than 12 to 15 hours to reach there and you know and you can compare uh, our uh, broadband speech to that today okay but when 5g comes it will be akin to having the expressway okay and today what happens where your smartphone is you know at the center of your life what is going to happen is that in 5g the data transfer is so fast or where we call the latency is in such milliseconds that all the activity will be done in the cloud so you know you might not you might not have to download anything as such because the speed of connectivity will be very fast everything will be virtual and all your data will be stored in the cloud so when this happens data flows will improve they will grow exponentially okay because everything will be on demand and when you come to the iot world okay when we talk of iot where devices are connected everywhere so let us say that uh, you are in your house you have a amazon echo or uh, you have smart uh, gadgets everywhere where your tv your lights everything is interconnected right so when you press sleep on your phone everything downs okay that is the kind of thing that happens in a house now you think of billion such networks in every house and then you think about uh, car connectivity you know so your car can talk to your gadgets at home so when you're traveling when you're nearing home your ac will start on a uh, it will at a particular temperature you know uh, it will play music for you in the car depending on your mood it will recognize your mood and play okay it will make calls for you it will receive calls for you everything will be done automatically it will do ordering on your behalf so these kind of models when they are going to play off you know fiber will be the backbone of everything it will be the is it will be like the highway to a vehicle right and uh, sterlight is the one who makes this and as we move into 5g and we are uh, moving into the broadband and 5g and iot era okay over the next 10 years what we are going to see is increasing fiber requirement and boy will fiber sterlight continue to keep growing okay but before we go to that presentation which will summarize everything let us see how the fourth the third, third, third dimension is the business readiness and growth curve so you know sterlight has got adequate fiber capacity it has done expansion okay so they not only make optic fiber they also make the cables this constitutes about 76% of the revenues then they have integration and software uh, services also which is about 20% of the revenues are more high margin than fiber and they have other small businesses uh, which are like 
other operating income which is export incentives and scrap which is about 2% of their turnover okay let's understand the business readiness of uh, sterlight so they have presence across 100 countries large presence in india china europe and brazil which are like the growing economies they did an acquisition recently in italy to improve their presence they have end to end manufacturing so you know some players would make fiber buying the glass some guys would make the cables by buying the fiber here sterlite makes glass from sand converts draws fibers out of it uh, uh, bundles the fibers to make cables he does system integration and he also provides value added services so they have end to end businesses and they can do projects at all uh, parts of the value chain and this ensures that they have extremely high steady state margins okay if you take the case of india you know we are absolutely under penetrated the existing incumbents which is airtel uh, idea vodafone they never did penetrate the they never laid uh, broadband okay now 4g players are at 15 to 20 percent broadband rollout well as geo is at 40 and try has mandated that they have to go up to 60 percent by 22. so you know you have a good uh, road map ahead for you further heavy investments are lined up because of the tri mandate not only this other agencies like the army navy rail india are all bullish uh, on these opportunities further you know if you want uh, fiber to home for your video on demand ott platforms <coughs> if you want all these streaming services you need fiber to your house which is called ftth or fttx where x can replace anything it could be office uh, then what is happening is that globally uh, hotspots for wi-fi are being rolled out okay but the core connectivity is provided through broadband only okay and i already spoke to you about iot connectivity which will unleash new business models unlike never seen before and the fiber will be the backbone of iot and sterlite would be the obvious leave one of the few players who would be uh, there so multiple drivers exist to propel this growth so one is the integrated operations which we spoke about they have ramped up capacities and are now improving utilizations they have a diversified presence which reduces risk of any one market specifically india which is so prone to uh, government uh, whims and fancies right so if you are liked by the government you are patronized else otherwise you are an outcast so they are fairly diversified on that and the robust demand outlook which i explained to you for fiber and the services integration which is a typical uh, cherry on the cake but before we go get to peer set analysis and evaluation i would like to now take you through the entire presentation of sterlite itself which i said doesn't need reproduction because it is so exhaustive and so well uh, made right So here we are. Right. So like I told you about the industry dynamics. Okay. Starlight has significant operations. They have a diversified customers, smart cities, rural broadband, and larger enterprises like defense. They not only design, build, and they manage these networks. They have products in this space. We have optical fibers. They do system integration services. So they integrate all these networks for you. And they also provide you with telecom software. As I mentioned to you, they have end-to-end -end operations, right? So you have silicon, glass preform, optic fiber, cabling, system integration, and uh, software to make it work. <clears throat> so if you want to set up a data network, you know, Sterlite is your go-to company. 
Uh, just one second. I think one of our students might be on call, so I need to take this phone. I will just uh, mute the uh, this thing for just one minute. Okay. Hello. Ha. Are mat phone karo yar. Chuti ho kya tum log? Well, we had a call from Indore, so I know how all of us are troubled. Anyways, moving ahead from this is uh, we spoke about fiber technology, right? Uh, we'll come to this later. Let's now understand the, uh, the 5G uh, cable. So there is a total revolution happening. Everything is connected. You have industry, homes, finance, cars. Everything is connected, right? They all talk to each other. <clears throat> Even on a machine floor, one robot talks to the other. This is the, the high intensity of how much connectivity there is. Then, you know, data consumption is already, what has happened is number of users has doubled. Devices have gone 7x. And everyone wants video on demand, right? So video, you need high definition video. Uh, you're playing games, whatever, you know. So for that, fiber is the best thing. And then you have <coughs> multiplier effect. Huh? So 58% of the population is using internet up from 44 Look at the traffic per month per user. You know, earlier I used to use 2 GB, now 2 GB per day is not enough. Okay, each one, you know, so you'll have two mobile phones, you'll have one laptop, you'll have one, uh, uh, one more smart device, you'll have an Echo, and you'll also have a TV, video and streaming services. <clears throat> and most of this data is coming from video. And see what are the average speeds, right? So all this more users, more apps, more data per user, more devices is leading to a zoom. So, you know, in <clears throat> see how the global uh, this thing is moving. Data stream is now moving. So 1.06 in three years, it is expected to go to uh, 10 raised to 21 bytes, one zeta bytes, if you call, could call it, you know. So that is absolutely humongous, you know. And now what is happening is see where the <coughs> this thing is coming. So what happens is that typically the delay, you know, when I spoke to you about latency, you know, the, the milliseconds of back and forth movement of data. So, you know, so when you have a personal cloud, video streaming, wireless cloud based office, these things are okay with 1000 milliseconds. But as you get more connected, let us talk of autonomous driving. Here, you know, you cannot have latency, which is one millisecond. You know, and the bandwidth that is required varies across. So, most of these services that are there, emergency services, they need close to one gigabyte of uh, services. So this is the kind of all these are all new technologies which we'll be using over the next three to four years, not even five years. Over the next three to four years, they will be mainstream in your life. And the first one will be cloud. In fact, just to give you an example, Amazon has developed, uh, I was watching on TV one of these days, and Microsoft has developed an entire data center which they have put underwater. Okay, so it is like a disaster center. It has been put underwater. And uh, so you don't need to cool because it's under the water. You know, it cools by itself. But the technology has been enhanced so much. <clears throat> and see, as I told you, you know, Till about 3G, you were not using fiber so much. So fiber was only between, you know, the traffic was majorly through uh, cities and then through uh, networks. But as you came into 3G, most towns, areas and suburban areas. And when 4G comes, 
it is now between towers so towers also need to be connected and when you go into 5g between small cells and buildings and homes all will be connected by, by fiber okay <clears throat> so let us see the capex and fiber connection cycles so see how this jumps up so 2g to 3g it was 1.3x and to 4 it was 1.6x right and global ofc consumption in million fiber kilometers has jumped from 4 uh, 0.4 billion to 2.3 billion in 17 and just expected to further explode from here <clears throat> so let us understand how does this 5g data will come here so you know typically what is to happen is that this was a 4g infrastructure existing right now so you had something what are called macro cells right and they would talk to each other through micro signals but when you get into 5g infra you know what will happen and only these cells were connected by broadband okay and this would relay signals on microwave but as you get into this what is required is that the minimum distance between two centers which are relaying signals for 5g has to be 250 meters right so then what happens you have uh, towers and you have small cells and they're all connected through fiber so see how much dense the network is getting from 5x is getting to 10x right and as you add more data you know you zoom more you take more video on demand existing fiber networks will also have to be augmented so this is the thrust of it we call smart networks you have data analytics right limitless and secure storage <clears throat> and see what is happening so these are the products that he makes which is optical fiber see how the demand has grown up to 17 you know cumulative global consumption over the last 18 years is almost 3.5 billion uh, fiber kilometers right now see what happens value chain sterlight is only one of the 10 who manufacture fiber but it does all these activities okay uh, see how they are getting ready for the future we talked of business readiness right so optic fiber which was at 30 million fiber kilometers they're augmenting by 10 million kilometers every year <clears throat> and in fy19 despite capacity going up 66 percent they're expected to be close to 100 percent utilization okay that is phenomenal so even in fy19 that is the current year his capacity will be full and he'll have to again create more capacity right let's look at other services that he offers so we are there is not much to say about all this but i just wanted to highlight to you the intensity of these operations <clears throat> right uh, we'll come back to all this a little later but now we need to see peer set and evaluation so when we are undertaking this is a fourth dimension that we are looking at peer set analysis and evaluation so what do i mean once you are finalized on an industry and you are looking at the players and let us say you want to compare sterl sterlite obviously you will do a comparison of sterlite with other players okay and on the base and then you'll have an evaluation right and analysis by itself is not enough you have to evaluate <coughs> okay so normally when we take up analysis and evaluation we do it across various things so first is how much capacity you have what products you use what are the products you manufacture what are the services you offer what are the brands you have what is the technological edge that you have what is your business plan how are you going to execute execute your business plan in terms of strategy 
and vision okay what is a skill to execute okay cost efficiencies if you have any what is your capital structure <clears throat> okay if you have a very big equity then you will not deliver value your equity needs to be low so that you can get the operating leverage and we finally see return ratios so from the capital structure you get return ratios and based upon how good your return ratios are we get valuation we will be seeing all these things as we evaluate other companies but this is a broad manner in which across these elements you must typically do a business analysis and evaluation okay in the case of uh, sterlite when we were doing it we said the competitive intensity is restricted because there are only 10 players who manufacture fiber see there are more than 10 manufacturers who make or uh, operate optical fiber here you make the preform here you make the fiber and there are more nearly 200 players who do the cabling so cabling is a more manual job right once you have uh, once you have uh, satisfied yourself as to how a company is performing and <clears throat> what is its future uh, performing and that you are satisfied that it is a great play and worth investing in what we need to do is step back and take a uh, look in the rear view mirror to see how the past has been because if it is a great company and if it is not delivered in the past do you think it will deliver in the future right so you need to satisfy yourself on these factors and once you are satisfied that the past performance is improving or you know the company is getting in act together then we get into stage of scenario forecasting Normally, I would this would have taken three classes and we would have done it. But what we are going to do here is just to give you a brief idea of how it is done. I will run you through the entire process of uh, analysis and scenario forecasting. I will take it very slowly. We will spend about an half hour on this. But mind you, this is only to give you a flavor. We will be getting into the depth of analysis, evaluation and forecasting on a spreadsheet as we take up these activities <coughs> across different uh, companies so in our next class i will introduce you to a very small company from where we will do the analysis and go forward from that okay <coughs> so let's do this analysis because it is already done in a report i will use that report as a reference and uh, and I have not duplicated the stuff out here. So uh, what we will do is we will go to the Ventura report and uh, this thing. So most of the content I have borrowed from here, right? But what I wanted to emphasize on is that it is very important to get a rear view mirror analysis of what the company has done about in the past and if you go about five to ten years back i think it can your analysis cannot get any better than that okay a five-year period is good enough ten years is sure exhaustive if you have a cyclical business like a, a steel cycle or a shipping company then you might have to go 20 years back because you know you want to see how well they've done in a up cycle and up cycles in industry like steel and shipping come after a very very long time you know so if you notice in this uh, just to get without reading into this if you notice that the net profit of the company in 11 was over 140 crores and it had gone into a loss in 2014 before it came back to about uh, scratch in 2015 and let us see how it was you know your telecom business was on a rising curve which was in 2012 your telecom business was between 500 to 1000 crores and today it has in from 2012 to 2015 mind you it went up three times so almost two times so 750 
became about 1500 crores and at that time the 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 power business which was there fell quite sharply so from 2250 crores in 13 it had fallen down to about 1750 crores and mind you when a business goes into a loss this is for everyone to remember is that whenever the revenues decline the profit fall is huge even if you have a slight decline in uh, top line or even if you have flat top line be sure that there are problems at the bottom okay <clears throat> it's a different case where if you are in a value added business and the business grows doesn't grow yet your margin expand you know so you need to be a uh, very clear about one thing if you have got falling revenues na something is a problem because a falling revenue cannot be compensated by falling costs costs always go up you cannot fire people you cannot lower machinery immediately it all takes time and that impact hits you so always remember this declining revenues red flag go and see if it's a value added business because of which margins may have expanded but revenues are down right or it's a commodity business so you might have lower prices but greater profits so commodity stocks and value added businesses are an exception to this what i have told you so what happened in 16 the company turned around uh, to demerge the <coughs> power business okay and stl or starlight technologies became a pure telecom product and services company so this really helped uh, grow the business and as you notice STL's revenues grew at a 22% CAGR from our 2100 crores to about 3100 crores in FY18. Okay, and the EBITDA grew at 32% from 407 to 711. Yeah, right? so see what happened once the so the the removal of the demerged uh, the struggling power business. was value additive to the company so you can well be sure that although the promoter plays rookie with the small smart small shareholder yet because he has enough skin in the game he is not averse to you know improving the shareholder return for himself and for the company and indirectly for you okay the software business has started sometime in 16 and it has grown very well but see its order book it's a 250 crore order book with a run rate of about 125 crores and we expect this uh, revenues from this business to continue to grow sharply okay with uh, very high margins so we are looking at margins of about 22% right so this is the left chart is showing you the revenue growth and the right chart is showing you ebitda growth and so how so while we are saying this how are these uh, so this was a historical past we spoke about uh, revenues how they have grown and now we are talking about forecasting so the scenario analysis right so just to take you back uh, we do past performance analysis and scenario forecasting so scenario forecasting is nothing but forecasting the future right so notice what is happening is that there are multiple drivers which are going to lead to as i showed you so one is the integrated manufacturing process and they have virtually uh, 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 virtually made an um, opera out of this so the very little that can go wrong out here okay it works like clockwork uh then they are ramping up capacities and improving utilization that is what i have shown you so it has set up operations in india china and brazil okay and today while it has of capacity of fiber capacity 30 million tons i showed you it's taking it to uh, 50 million tons right which will be done over two stages so this is how its capacity expansion is happening and the capacity utilization by fi20 will surely be 100% so we'll have to add new capacity as we go forward right 
then with various under initiatives that are undertaken around the world like bharat net broadband china demand for fiber will continue to rise and stl will reap opportunities so you know globally it is going to it has a global presence as we spoke about you know see the export revenues they continue to grow at a 500 crores gone to 1500 crores phenomenal growth rate okay see his geographied presence so while he was 63% in India, 17, 18 it had come down to 46%. Right? Uh, we did not focus future growth because you know India is a strong market and we in this share can stay like this, though China is expected to come down a bit. Right? Now just see the demand outlook. Where is the demand for fiber coming from? So predominantly China. China is the big uh, elephant in the room. This is followed by uh, the US, Europe, India, and the rest of the world. As we said, fiberization is a globalized phenomenon, witnessing increasing adoption rate. Uh, this we have all discussed that. Okay. See the comparison of other countries with us. You know, even South Africa is at 50%, we are at 25%. So there is, even if to reach global averages, I think we can double fiber outlook. Okay, developed world is 80%. And with 4G and 5G, you have no option. Okay, you have to be uh, well fiberized. So we'll be moving from 20 to absolutely 80 or even 90%. <clears throat> or even 100%. So, you know, you have a big ramp up, which will happen over the next five, six years. And because Sterlite manufactures fiber, it will be at the crux of every opportunity. Okay, we spoke about our tri diktat of a minimum 60% fiberization. And fiber prices are quite firm globally, though, you know, companies don't uh, talk about it. It varies from eight to $10. Okay, and I won't be surprised if we have a graphite kind of uh, impact out here, should there be aggressive growth and not enough fiber. But we are not, that's a rarity of happening because capacity can be put up. Players in the industry know what kind of capacities are required. And mind you, all players are very guarded about their expansion plans and how much they can offer. Okay, so and once you roll out fiber, you obviously get uh, cherry on the cake, software integration services. So uh, STL is currently developing networks, IIT platform for three smart cities, Gandhinagar, Jaipur, Kakinada. They have won a 3,500 crore order for the Indian Navy. So it's for nine years, right? It is also building for multiple Bharat net orders. Okay. As we spoke about, order book is uh, very heavy. They have 4,000 crore of our order book. And as we speak, the order book is 5,000. But let me come back to you later on this. Okay. So high focus on R&D. They have, they have a high list of patents which will be used in oncoming uh, growth. And, you know, the recent acquisition that they did is value accretive. So... Once we have done this, I told you we need to do an analysis of their uh, results, their operating performance. So you should do an analysis of the past of minimum five to 10 years and at least eight quarters. Okay, so let's blow this up a bit and uh, do the analysis. So if you notice that Q1 FI 17 was 600 crores. Q2 was a dip, Q3 was higher, Q4 was a dip. Let's see if this repeats. Q4, Q4 Q1 FI18, Q2 FI18 higher, Q3 FI18, Q4 FI18. So it is not, so it was only an element that it was down in Q2 FI17. I guess this was the GST introduction target, right? Uh, we will have to see why Q4 was down. So typically, you know, bulk of the orders are from uh, the government. So they tend to get lumpy, you know. So, but 
we should analyze and i also should analyze why q4 was down i don't remember exactly but that's a lesson for me as i teach you i also learn okay so let's see margins margins were around 19% today they are a handsome 26% right uh, look at their uh, pbt margin 19% profit margin at 15% you know look at interest costs there were 32 crores in q1 fy17 36 crores in q1 q2 fy17 and consistently coming down right another thing you should see out here is the payout ratio how much are you paying back to customers to your shareholders either in the form of dividend buyback or bonus shares right so what is the financial outlook looking at so kaiger growth was 22% we are now seeing 27% growth so this is what we do you know so uh top line will grow at 27% right uh we are expecting ebitda margins to reach so you know we are conservative in our estimates so although they did 24 26% margin see here ebitda margins you know were 26% but you know always err on the side of caution uh aim lower perform higher right so we are expecting margins to come down to 20 we are managing lower margins at 23% okay on the back of increasing business from the of products however on comparatively lower margin av product we expect margins to remain subdued over the next two years right uh, so while uh, revenues growing at 27% we expect ebitda to grow at 29% right and net earnings are expected to grow at a cagr of 30% so you have a little bit of uh, operating leverage not too much okay we are expecting pairing of debt in fy21 so after fy21 we expect debt, debt to come down moreover that uh, working capital not expected to change much sustain itself and roe is wow 29 to 30% ROC is said to expand to 37%. So we will come to the definition of this terminology tomorrow in the I mean in the next class on Thursday. See these are I'm just guiding you through the thing. So how do we manufacture uh, ROE? ROE is nothing but the net profit divided by the total equity that is equity plus net worth. Return on capital employed is nothing but the EBITDA divided by the size of the balance sheet which is the capital employed right so this business enjoys so these are the figures look at the operating income coverage debt to equity expected to come down to 1 right so what are the key threats so you should not only see the optimistic side look at also what can happen so at present there is no alternative medium to fiber but if anything comes through if you have if you can make the data jump then you know this guy is out of business and stl derives majority of its revenues from three geographies if any of these markets are impacted things would be diverse but they are into 100 geographies and there is a currency risk because it drives 54% of its revenues but in this kind of market where globally currencies are declining they are in sweet waters isn't it then we have the valuation right so we have uh valued the stock at uh 24 times fy21 okay so why 24 you know so average pe is 12 times and what we have noticed is that you know this orange line which i use is 22x so we are expecting it to go beyond that sorry that was the ev by ebitda trend the p trend is that 23 is the average so we are given an average rating but i won't be surprised if the stock even quotes at 35 to 40 times i mean why not you know after what i have told you about this industry 
you know or uh, depending upon how fast the fiber demand grows and just see what is the revenue growth for the company over the next 3 years so let's see the eps right so what are we expecting 8.4 to 18.4 in 3 years right so 18.4 so we have to take the peg ratio isn't it so your p is 16 in 21 and your growth rate is 27% you know kagal so 16 divided by 27 will give you a peg ratio 3 years out of 0.59 and in to my mind that is a screaming buy absolutely screaming buy because anything around 0.5 is a buy anything above one is a kind of a a thing a kind of a sell uh, that's all notional so theoretical the real practical world works quite different but on theoretical grounds starlight is a typical buy but before we so how do we get these things so we see sales we have grown the sales at that rate as i told you uh see we'll get into the details of all this forecasting in another class as i mentioned to you earlier but what i want to do is i want to take you back to the presentation so this is what we did past performance analysis and secure, uh, scenario forecasting and then we are coming to the dimension 6 is that that is having done all this analysis and forecasted what we do is we track the company eight times a year so we have a mid quarter tracking we track the company for quarterly results and if there is a important corporate announcement then your mid quarter tracking could change to that you know so eight times a year if you track the company i think you are on you are on top of the things that are happening and never get married to a stock just because you built in a bullish forecast and you know if the forecast is looking a little blip right now lower your expectations you know because it's better to be in sync with the market than to be stuck to your ego right so when we are doing dimension 6 analysis when you are doing progress tracking monitoring validation reassessment what are we doing out here is we go back to the quarterly results right and from there we take things forward so for example we will now go back to the presentation because it is the latest right this uh, presentation came uh yesterday or i think day before yesterday and let us see how they have performed okay so let's go to their site so quarterly financials so they have your q1 fy19 financials right so let's see what the company did he did about 876 crores of uh, turnover right so if we were to take 876 into 4 it's doing about 3500 crores okay and as per our uh, analysis we are expecting to do 4500 crores right so this was for this is what we said uh, four times right but let us see how well he did compared to the previous year so on 876 divided by 744 
so he's done about 17% higher and we have projected that they will do 27% higher right so it has come a little below our expectations but we believe that the growth will come in the years out right but however if you see the on the net profit side okay 129 crores right which is double of what he did last year okay so i think the ship is quite in the right directions you know we should drop down to a quarterly level and do your analysis quarterly also what kind of expectations are there so in the next class we will build this and i will re-show you this starlight so that we get a better example of that and then we listen to the management court uh, commentary we evaluate performance for our outlook once your performance is finalized your outlook says that things should be tempered down a bit you know so you might temper revenues a bit but the EBITDA is great but you so you know just to err on the side of caution we don't actually improve the EBITDA too much because we would like to have uh, to be conservative in our estimates so that is how we go out and build and depending upon the market outlook we will then assign a higher or a lower p multiple but that we will look at a later juncture when we go to the final time of portfolio allocation concentration and market facilitation okay so if you have any questions on this uh please whatsapp me just now and i will address them Are we good? So as we said, uh, Starlight has no competition because the other people manufacture. Uh, so there are two things. One is that uh, cable is in short supply. So there is no competition as such. Number one, you are among the top 10 players in the world. You are the most cost efficient, right? You're the lowest cost producer. So in a sense, you don't have competition and uh, we are geographically well diversified and we have a good presence. So we are all there in the key markets. So with a growing market, competition is not that much severe. Okay. In India is the only one who makes fiber. So any guy who wants to put up optic fiber will have to uh, buy from him or source globally and because of the lowest cost obviously it will go with him any other questions we have So fine guys, let's just step back and uh, re-evaluate what we discussed, right? So uh, let's uh, evaluate. So we have these 12 dimensions investment toolbox where we first discussed the leadership stakeholders and the growth hunger. We looked at business prospects and opportunity heat map. We have seen the business readiness to take on the launch. Then we saw how peer set analysis and evaluation is done. We also had a view at how past performance analysis and scenario forecasting is undertaken and also how to progress, track, monitor, validate and reassess the situation. So next time we will take on operating leverage and mode and valuation potential and re-rating. Okay. Along with uh, stock selection through criteria of elimination. We will look at these three, uh, uh, <clears throat> how should I say, the next three characteristics. So this could be a slightly longer class because operating leverage, moat, valuation and stock selection through criteria of elimination are uh, very, very 
interesting topics that all of us would appeal in in fact i think what i will do is i will take only uh, two of them no we will do all three of them next time otherwise we will lack in classes as we go out okay so uh, your assignment for the week is that i gave you one assignment the other day and for next thursday i would want all of you to take a look at rbl bank based on all these seven eight parameters okay six parameters that we have spoken about it's okay if you get stuck up somewhere okay but but if you get stuck up you know what you are not understood right so that is a challenge and a challenge which is a doubt which has to be overcome so please take up this exercise and uh, i will be contacting all of you on monday tuesday uh, to see how you are going on this and uh, i will uh, send you out all the data on rbl bank uh, tomorrow right so we'll collect all the reports we'll collect all the data and we'll give it to you and i would want you to to reassess all these factors and make your own presentation and email me right yes so both the presentations will be sent to you right uh i will also make small notes on all six of these and send you across okay that i will send you by uh, monday uh and uh, our class will be ending today because it was a pretty brisk and a fast class okay but i hope that uh, i have been uh fairly erudite in explaining everything to you and all the guys who are attending the class i would like to have your feedback on whatsapp just now and if you have any other queries please uh, send it to me please add have them uh, addressed right now okay so we have anup kataria gurjeev mahesh and robin online thank you for your feedback i think our uh, our uh, infrastructure is much stabilized now we are on a faster broadband and uh, so thank you very much for your feedback and i hope you enjoyed the presentation as much as i did so i am going to sign off now and the people who are <laughs> yeah faster broadband fiber we are using fiber now so for the rest of you who are not present uh, i will download the presentation uh, the video and share it across with you thank you so much for having me and have a great uh, weekend